the owner for the Houston Rockets, was not playing any games. And I'm here to tell you something. He's justified because let me tell you, when I look at the Houston Rockets, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just that you lost. It's that you lost game six on your home court. You cannot have Kevin Durant healthy on the court averaging 33 against you. Clearly one of the prolific offensive juggernauts we've ever seen in this game. Kevin Durant has the Golden State Warriors up 2-0 in this series. Houston, with him on the floor, comes back and ties the series. With Kevin Durant on the floor, the Golden State Warriors go up 20 in Game 5. With them still on the floor, Houston comes back, takes the lead. And then the man goes down with 2 minutes and 11 seconds left in the third quarter with the calf injury that looked like an Achilles injury. And somehow over the course of the last 14 minutes without Kevin Durant, you're the Houston Rockets and you have no answer. You don't put your foot on their throat and, and, and grind them into the ground and take them out. How do you not do that if you're the Houston Rockets? If you're the team who everybody's been chirping about would have won a championship if CP3 didn't get hurt near the end of game five in last year's Western Conference Finals, how is it that now the CP3 is healthy? And James Harden is healthy. You're about having played together. And Eric Gordon is balling. And P.J. Tucker's going, giving his contribution. Mike D'Antoni is still your coach, so it's not, a good, it's not a new system. How in God's name do you turn around and can't do anything in game five? But that's what happened. And then game six. James Harden drops 35. CP3 has his best game of the series, dropping 27. And somehow, someway, the Kevin Looney's and the Andre Iguodala's and the Quinn Cooks and the Jarebko's of the world and the McKinney's of the world come off the bench to help Golden State overcome a scoreless first half by Steph Curry. They keep you in the game until Steph Curry explodes for 33 points in the second half. I could go off about that. But why bother when you have the owner for the Houston Rockets, Mr. Tillman Fertitta, in only his second year or so owning the team to do it for me? Listen to this man speak. Very upset right now. They kicked our ass in our home court. They beat us by 10 points in the fourth quarter. It's unacceptable. Okay, We just have to be better. And, and I know that we're going to rise to the occasion, and our time's going to come. You know, James is 30 years old. Michael didn't win his first championship till 30. Hakeem didn't win his first championship till 30. I can promise you we're going to win some championships with James Harden, okay? Because we are not going to sit here. We will go to battle every year. We're going to have a strong offseason, and we're going to do whatever we can do to be a better team, okay? We are not going to sit on our hands. I can promise you that. Hmm. couple of points to pull from that, ladies and gentlemen. Couple of points to pull from that. Point number one. Tillman Fertitta was wrong about this much. Michael Jordan won his first title at the age of 27. He was 27 years old when he won his first title. Okay? Michael Jordan. That year, 1990-91, he was 27 years of age, played all 82 games, averaged 31 and a half points on 53% shooting from the field. He was Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Okay? His birthday is February 17th, 1963. So when you look at him in the 1990-91 season, when they won their championship, he was 27 years of age. That's number one. Number two, listen to Fatita. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to confess, I love this man. I love this man. I love this man's attitude. He's ticked off. He's not happy. They underachieved. He expected more. They didn't deliver. And he's going to hold people accountable. Now, I don't know what he can do. When you're just in the first year of giving Chris Paul a four-year, $160 million deal that they had to give him. When James Harden is going to get his money, what the hell can you do other than let go of the coach? And listen, I don't know whether he's going to do this or not. I really don't. And I'm not sitting here acting like Mike D'Antoni, oh, get rid of him, fire him. That's not what I'm saying. 
And I'm not saying that Daryl Morey didn't do a good job because we know he's one of the exceptional GMs in this business. What I'm saying is if you listen to the owner, since we're not going to sit on our hands, we're not going to stand still. This is unacceptable. Why? Because you lost on your home court in game six. See, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a different philosophy, and this is why Stephen A. Smith, I guess why I'm not a president of basketball operations. Listen, because I know I would do a good job, but here's the reason why I'm probably not. See, I'd have a goon on my squad. Let me be very, very clear. Against league rules, I'll openly admit it, I'd have at least one goon on my squad. You know who that goon would be? It would be somebody that would be ready to punch his teammates in the face during practice if he had to. It's, that's, what it, that's what it would be. That's what it would be. I'm telling you that right now. I think every team needs it. And Houston was the voter. And John, I'll tell you what I tell my producer something right now. Tell my godson, Jonathan, here, right in front of me. Let me tell y'all a little story about me. I played Division II ball. I played at Winston-Salem State for the great big house games, whatever the case may be. Cracked my kneecap in half so I could never really shine or whatever. But earlier in a part of my career, before I cracked my kneecap, tell you a little story, John. I had a teammate. His nickname was Shaq. Tall, relatively skinny dude. Wore goggles, high top. Yeah, 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 what's going on? That's how he used to talk, you know? And I got into a game. And an opponent for the opposite team drilled three three shots in front of my face. Just, 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 just drilled three jumpers in my face. He said, yo, and they called me Saul. That was my nickname in college, Saul. And he said, yo, yo, Saul, come here for a second. Come here for a second. Yo, come in. I'm a bust your living, you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, I played 20 minutes the rest of that game. That man didn't score one basket. I was scared to death that Lance Jones, Shaq, was going to whip my you know what. I was scared to death because he didn't play. He wasn't playing. He, trust me when I'm telling you, he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He meant it. He's going to bust my living, you know what? Because damn it, yo, it's not happening. Stop him. Figure it out. You need a goon on every squad. And a lot of times we look at a dude, some rough rider, like a P.J. Tucker, and we look at a guy who's hard-nosed, hardcore, and it's his job to defend whatever. No, no, I'm not talking about that kind of dude where he goes on the court and he's a rough rider. I'm talking about the kind of rough rider that makes you scared to be in the locker room or in practice with them because you're afraid of what they're going to do to you if you don't do your job. I think every team needs that. Remember Ken Bannister with the New York Knicks from back in the day? Remember Anthony Mason when, when, when Pat Riley found him off the scrap heap? God rest his soul. Remember guys like Xavier McDaniel, Maurice Lucas? The Bill Lambert's, the Rick Mahorns of the crew, those dudes. Xavier McDaniels, those dudes. Charles Oakley's, those dudes. To me, every team needs one of those guys. Every team needs one of those guys. To a lesser degree, certainly not the enforcer that any of those guys are that I just mentioned. To a lesser degree, that's Draymond Green for the Golden State Warriors. Do you really want to not do your job? And have Draymond Green as a teammate? Because let me tell you something about Draymond Green. He's a basketball savant. He knows the game. He's smart. You can't sit up there and look at Draymond Green and judge him by scoring. That's not what he does. If that's the case, Rodman would be a scrub bagging groceries instead of a Hall of Famer. It's how you play the game. It's the cerebral approach that you have towards the game because of your understanding about what everybody is supposed to be doing along with yourself. And it's the athleticism and the fire in your belly and the competitive fervor in your belly that enables you to hold other people accountable. Why is Michael Jordan great? The GOAT. Why is Kobe Bryant worthy of being in the conversation? Because, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't just about them and their ability to put the ball in the hole. It was about the fire in their belly that made them hold you accountable. That made them say, 
I don't give a damn about your friendship. I don't give a damn if you like me. I don't give a damn if we don't get along. You better do your damn job or else. That was them. As great as they were, Kobe and MJ had a little bit of goon in them. They had a little bit of goon in them. Where's that in Houston? It's non-existent. It's a big reason why they lost. It's a big thing that Fertitta was alluding to. And it's why I believe it's possible. I don't know, but it's possible. Fertitta might make a coaching change. I put nothing past this man. He ain't playing. D'Antoni is not safe right now. This was an incredible loss of a series for him. It was an indictment against whether or not you can win playing his brand of basketball. And you can act like it's an indictment against James Harden too because he's no Steph Curry as we've learned, and we got that. But the brother did average nearly 35, shooting nearly 45% from the field and over 30% from three-point range. It's not like he didn't ball. It's not like he sold out. It's not like he did a disappearing act like a couple of years ago against the Spurs. He just wasn't Steph Curry. But what position was James Harden put in to succeed? We don't want to talk about that, do we? Well, guess what? We will. Right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. That was Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. Your phone calls and more up next as I continue talking about these NBA playoffs and the draft lottery coming up tomorrow night. You're listening live to Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way.